Southern Maryland Blue Crabs manager, Butch Hobson. Thank you for being here, Mr. Hobson. Thank you for having me. It's, um, it's a nice hot day, and uh, it's a good day for baseball. It is. An exciting time here for us. Uh, we're getting down towards the end of the first half, and we're five games back with five games left, and we're playing the team we got to beat. So it's going to be an exciting 4th of July weekend, yeah. and uh, um, this, this ballpark and what they've done here is, is beautiful, and, and the people in this area can really be proud of this. And uh, hopefully they can get out here and see this ballpark. Yes, I hope everybody comes out to check out this next series. Um, Mr. Hobson, I wanted to ask you a little bit for our fans to give them some background. How did we create this team? Where do we find these players? How do you recruit them and where do they come from? Well, you, um, uh, you start with uh, your networking. Uh, managers uh, from other independent leagues. We have a lot of independent league guys, players here that have been playing independent ball for the last few years and then we've gone out into organizations you look at players that get released get released uh, a lot of times uh, you know a minor league director will have a player that that they know that they're just not going to have room for they'll call and say you know this this young man can still play he just needs to get at bats he needs to get innings uh, have a lot of rehab guys that uh, need to show organizations that they're healthy um, and it's a, it's a networking process. Um, you're looking at the releases every day. You're looking at the transactions every day. Uh, you try to develop a good um, a rapport relationship with agents mm -hmm. um, that have players that are, that are looking for jobs. So, you know, and, and it's, it, it becomes a very difficult thing when you lose players. Right. Uh, we, 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 don't have, uh, we don't have a buoy to go to and fill a spot mm -hmm. uh, at a higher level. Um, so it's 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 a working process. Now, what about um, tryouts? Do you have different tryouts that you host in the off season? <coughs> well, we did we didn't do a tryout this year, but it's something we're going to try to do next year. We, being a new team, we really didn't. The stadium wasn't ready, so uh, our plans for next year are to do a, a, an open tryout for players in the area, um, release players, college graduates, players that didn't get drafted. We we, we do plan on doing that. Uh, you know, early next spring before we go to spring training. Okay. And you mentioned spring training. Where do you do spring training? We uh, we go to Florida. We go down to Lakeland. We're at the Tigers Complex. This, this was the second year that the Atlantic League has been in Lakeland. Um, very nice complex. Been there for a long time. Um, six of the eight teams went there this year, and uh, we get probably five games in. It's a real short spring training, only about 12 days. So guys have to come in shape if they're not in shape they they usually end up not making a team or they get injured if they're not in shape okay thank you um, that gives you fans a little bit of information about how the blue crabs came to be as a team where we get the players joe has a few questions about um, now that the season's in full swing um, mr hobson's expectations yeah thanks butch uh, the first half is coming to a close you're five games behind camden and you've got a five you've got five games to play against them now if you were to beat them, and I hope you do, win all five games against Camden, you'll be tied. Now, how, how, what's the decision as far as uh, who gets the, the championship for the first half? Well, we, um, we, I just spoke with Joe Klein, our director, and they did a toy, um, coin toss, excuse me. Um, we won it, so um, we plan on playing here Monday for the first half championship. That's our plan, and you know, we, um, you know, once we start talking, I know you have some questions about the second half, and I can kind of give you a little idea of what we've done in our preparation to try to make a run at this thing so but um we got we've got to win six in a row That's now if, if you do do that who would the, be the team you'd be playing in the, in the playoffs camden it would be camden yes <laughs> you, and, you'd never yeah. get so you, there's, there's two divisions we're the liberty division we're in the same division with camden they've, they, they've had a very very good club they've been in first place all year uh and they've actually even you know can say more about joe ferguson and the job they've done they've lost six players already to organizations and uh, um, so we've got our work cut out for us. We've played them five times this year and we've, we haven't beaten them yet. We, we should have won three of those games, but we didn't. Uh, that's baseball, but uh, I think it's our turn now. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> I know uh, you're in second place as of today and five games behind Canada, but with a couple of breaks, you, you guys would be in first place. Well, you know, that's the game of baseball and that's how the ball bounces. You know, we we um, and I tell my players this: we uh, we look back at our losses that we had this year. We beat ourselves, and that's going to happen. You know, you try to avoid that as much as you can. But you know, we've lost some players ourselves. We lost our closer early. We lost two of the top starters in the league to organizations, and they're doing very, very well. And John Halama and Dan Reichert, um, 
you know, we had our, we lost our starting catcher for three and a half weeks. And he was really starting to swing the bat well. So um, it's 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 come down to a fun time and a fun weekend. And and you know, the game itself here. Uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to to see a ball game here, but this is a pretty exciting part to watch the ball game. The ball flies to left field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is get it in the air to left field. It's gone. <laughs> So you have o right handers opening up and left handers closing up to try to hit this ball to left field. So it's it's an exciting part to, to, to be a part. Of. Yeah, because uh, I listen to the games on the internet with the, the other on the other teams' web, uh, websites, and even the announcers get excited when when they, like a home run, they get excited for regardless of, who, of which side hit it. So it is an exciting place to be, especially you know with the the short left field but the higher wall, but uh, they still fly out of here. Well, it's uh, you know it. It is a um, right now kind of secluded. It's kind of like a, a, a prize out in the woods, you know, when you're coming down the road, coming down Piney Church, and there's this nice, beautiful ballpark. And, you know, the opposing players enjoy it here. Um, the fans here have been outstanding. Um, crowds have been, you know, we want them to be better, but they've been good. People um, get excited about about baseball in this. Well, they're excited about baseball in this area anyway, but I think they're really getting excited about this team. Um, you know, and it's a process of community involvement. It's a process of, you know, and another thing, getting back to building a team. I always put my teams together, or I try to put my teams together with class individuals. In other words, I, I, I go out and, and I'll talk to a player four or five times before I sign him. And sometimes I try to call their moms and dads because I want to know a little bit about their background. And, and, um, and, and, and I think that has, has transpired into the 25 players that I have in that locker room are really, really, really good people. I'm, I, I told them the other day that um, I haven't had a group like this um, for many years. I mean, I've had some really good groups, but this group, they like each other. They play well together. They, they love the game. That's, that's very important, the fact that they come here and give a good work day every day. So we're, we're excited about uh, today. Uh, we're excited about this weekend. Uh, we're excited. I'm very excited to be back in the Atlantic League after being away for two years. Um, it is the best independent league that you can play in or that you can manage in because it plays at such a high level. Um, so we're, we're um, I just think there's going to be a lot of really great things happen here at Regency Furniture Stadium over the next few years. Yeah, because usually uh, an expansion team doesn't do that well for at least a couple of years, but you guys are fighting to take first place, and that, that's amazing. You've had a, a heck of a first half. Well, you, I am proud of our first half. I really am. You, you know, and, and, and we have, we have, um, the thing about independent baseball is you, you know, when guys aren't producing or performing, it's time for them to go home, unfortunately. But we've stuck with our guys, um, you know, and, and the, the players that we have moved um, for some reason or the other, we've, we've moved them to another team so they continue to play. Uh, I don't like the outright release of a player because I know in independent baseball if they don't have some success here if they don't get the call to go back to an organization or if they don't get the call to go to Korea or Japan where they can make pretty good money um, they have to go home and I think the toughest thing for a, a professional athlete to accept the fact that it's over mm -hmm. so we try to you know I played for Bear Bryant at Alabama. He always taught life after football because he knew most of us were not going to play in the NFL. That's what we try to teach here is life after baseball. So did, because uh, I read about that, about you playing for Bear Bryant uh, football, and did you play baseball there too? And then how did you end up in baseball and not football? Well, I did play baseball. Coach Bryant didn't let too many people play baseball and football, but I think he probably saw that I really didn't have much of a future in football. So he, he said... <laughs> But Coach Bryant was a big, very, very big baseball fan, and, 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 and you know, and I was very highly recruited as a baseball player, too. And uh, there's one year that he didn't let me play because I really wanted to play quarterback for Bear Bryant. And he said, you got to go through spring training. And, and I did. And uh, ended up playing on a team that played for the national championship in uh, 1972 Orange Bowl. Now, Joe asked you some questions about um, finishing up this first half that – you're really almost neck and neck with Camden, five more games to play, five games back. What are your expectations and your goals for the second half? Is that fast approaching after the All-Star break? Well, we did something a little different. And, and, you know, as a manager, you try to come up with ideas. You try to come up with things to, um, whether it's motivationally or whether it's to take the mind, their mind off of certain things. We started our second half five games ago. 
And I told him, I said, uh, we're going to wipe the slate clean. You know, um, five games ago, we said, we're going to start a second half now. There's no batting average. There's no ERA. There's no wins. There's no losses. There's no errors. The slate's clean. So we're four and one this half, which is, you know, which the, the plan is to be nine and one this half and get in the playoff and, 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 and get a, in the playoff game with Kansas. Now, after the. Uh... I, excuse me. I'm sorry. But get back to second half. We, you know, we. Um, the thing about, you know, playing half seasons, if you if you struggle the first half, then it's, you just start over again the second half. So there's no there's no record. Then you go to win the second half and try to get yourselves in the playoffs to get to the championship game. So the wins and losses are all set back to zero That's for, correct. The, for the second half? That's correct. Right. Now with the All-Star game coming up, who has the best chance of the team uh, for making the All-Star team? No, with the All-Star, there's two divisions. There's the Liberty Division and the Freedom Division. So we pick players from both divisions and they play an all-star game in Long Island. So it's, it's not a team. Uh, you know, I have a, a vote, um, and, you know, I've voted for a number of my players that I think deserve it, um, as will other managers. But we do vote for both divisions, and we vote for, vote for players from all eight teams. Okay. Um, well, thank you for being with us. We appreciate thank you. you taking the time. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I want to say thank you to the the, the, the uh, people of Southern Maryland have um, treated me very well, uh, which I've expected that. But but I mean, it's like uh, um, down to earth, uh, you know, home feeling, and uh, it doesn't get much it doesn't get much better than that. And that's the way I was raised and grew up. And uh, just thank you for. Uh, for uh, adopting me, I should say. <laughs> right. Great. And we're happy to have you. We're happy to have the Blue Crabs. Um, and we look forward to having you back on our show in the coming weeks to I tell us it. about um, your win over Camden this week. Oh, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes. That'd be excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. All right. We're going to take a break right now. When we come back, we're going to have several of the Blue Crabs players with us to do interviews. Amy and I will return. We're going to say goodbye to Butch. But stay with us because we'll be right back. fans we're here with your blue crab shortstop George Sandell thank you for being with us George thank you for having me excited to be here well, we're glad to have you too how you how are you liking Southern Maryland it's not bad now that's uh, warmed up <laughs> wasn't too much fun when it was cold early in the season but now it's it's nice where would you get the heat and the humidity now though yeah I can't complain I'm from South Florida so. Florida so you get that anyhow yeah. so uh, right at home. give us some of your background uh, some of the teams you played with and you know over your, your career in the majors uh, I went uh, went to UNC Charlotte for three years. Um, signed out of there with uh, Seattle Mariners in 2003. Played with them for three years and I uh, went to Somerset and up to Canada and I'm back here in this in the Atlantic League with South Maryland for Butch Hobson. Now when, when uh, you're selected for a team like that, I know you were with Seattle for a while and then some of the minor, uh, minor league teams, where were you when you got the, when you just get a call that's saying hey you're coming to Southern Maryland? Yeah, actually, I was, I was going to go back to Canada. That was the plan. And then um, I played against Butch Hobson two years ago. And, you know, he tried to make a couple trades for me that year with Sparky Lyle and it didn't end up going through. And then he gave me a phone call this off season and said, hey, I'm managing the South Maryland team. Are you interested? And I said, yep. Pretty much it was pretty easy. And I've always wanted to play for him. I've heard a lot of good things. So 
played for him and you know haven't regretted it since. <laughs> Sound like a monster coming after us. <laughs> well, we're glad you're here. Uh, I know you're uh, married. You have a little girl. Yeah, Hannah's her name. Um, she's almost nine months. So this is my vacation. Get to sleep in a little bit. Off season didn't really sleep all that much. Now with the All Star break coming up, are you going back to Florida or are they going to come up here? If I make the All Star team, it's they, they were going to come up here, but I, I mean. I wouldn't mind those four days off. My hamstrings yeah. haven't really felt them since April, so. You know, that's one thing about the, the schedule in, in the Atlantic League. I think it was July. I think you, I mean, June, you went through. I don't think there was a day off the whole month. Yeah, we didn't, uh, we, I think we played 37 in a row, something like that. Yeah. Don't quote wow. me, but it's. it's a lot. You gotta love baseball to do a schedule like that. That's pretty brutal. Yeah. I've played every single inning, every single game, so yeah. trust me, I feel it. Yeah, wow, that's good. Now every single inning, every single game, talk a little bit about the chemistry that you have with um, your fellow infielders and with the team in general. I mean, it's, it's one of the biggest things people don't understand in this game is you have to have camaraderie and brotherhood in the locker room, otherwise it's going to be a long, long summer. Especially the guys who have families, it's, this is your family away from family, you know, if it's not fun in the locker room, it's, it's going to be miserable. You know, 140 games in 150 days, that's more than half a year you're away from your family. Right. So it's, you know, you have to have that brotherhood, that family feel in the locker room. And this, hands down, is the best team family-wise I've ever been a part of. Mm -hmm. Everyone gets along. There's no clicks. It's, everyone gets along for the most part. That's great. Butch Hobson had mentioned the exact same thing. We were just interviewing him, and, and he said it's the best group that he has played with, too, the best group of guys. Everybody gets along in the clubhouse. Everybody's positive. So that's probably helpful as a player. You really feel like you can excel on the field and off the field because you're probably getting positive criticism and working yeah. together. Butch has done an unbelievable job of getting the right mix in here. You know, we've had some guys sign and it's hurt us a little bit and, you know, we still have a big series coming up here. We sweep this series where, you know, we're in the playoffs. So it's, he's, he did a pretty darn good job. I don't know how the heck you do it because he didn't know half these people anyway. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if they have MySpace pages or something <laughs> where he put it all together, but it, uh, he did a pretty good job. We all get along. It's fun. Speaking of this next series, do you have any personal individual goals that you're looking to accomplish over these next few games, things you're trying to work on to help the team? Um, no, I'll just keep doing, you know, doing what I do. I try to get on base and let the big bats behind me drive me in. Uh, I'm not a home run guy. I'm not selfish, so I just get on base and let those big donkeys drive me in. I get to run around the bases. It's fun. But uh, Plus, we haven't beat Camden yet. And we. Don't really like him all that much anyway, so it'd be kind of fun to sweep him. Yeah, well, you do, you do. Yeah. But uh, I know uh, when I was talking to Butch earlier about uh, you know an expansion team usually doesn't do that good for you know the first couple of seasons, but you guys are fighting to, to be in first place, and that's that's an amazing feat. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually it's good because I mean we're we're a pretty darn good team, you know, and people realize that now mm -hmm. in the league, people are like, wow, this is unbelievable. It's, that's phenomenal that you guys are doing this, doing that, and they picked us to only win 50 games the entire year. Well, we're already more than halfway there, and we're not even halfway done. So it's good to you know shut those press people up. Yeah, especially after you lost Dan Reichert and John Halama, you know, two of the top pitchers, and then you know you signed some new people, and you never broke a stride. You just keep on trucking. It's a lot of teams are you know you had a big early lead like Camden. They've had a lot of guys sign, and they're starting to falter. But we've Butch has replaced the good guys we've had with just guys just as good. If you know. It's, it's, you got to say a lot for that because I mean, you, you lose two big arms like Halama and Riker, that's that's hard to fill. I mean, you take Pettit and Ching Ming Wong away from the Yankees, <laughs> they don't have two guys in AAA that are going to come yeah. step in like those guys do. Right. It's hard to find that. So, you know, as, you know, as, as the season started, uh, it seems like the team is getting more powerful every time, because I listen to the games on the internet, and it's just home run after home run after home run. Versus the beginning of the season, there really wasn't that much firepower. And just everybody gelled, and there's just home runs, and they're being hit when, and especially you, you're you're scoring a lot of runs. You're getting on base. You're not hitting the home runs, but you're getting on base and then scoring when the other guys. Uh, bring the big guys. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, we talked earlier. The chemistry is you have to have it. I mean, mm -hmm. if you can have guys hitting home runs in pointless situations, that does no good. Solo home runs, what's that going to do? You know, get a couple guys on there, then hit that big home run. Now it's a big inning, and that's just kills pitchers and right. us offensive guys we hate pitchers as it is yeah and at this point in the season you've played together longer um, you know your major league teams your spring training is a lot longer um, Butch had mentioned you only played I think five or six spring training games so it doesn't give you a lot of time to get to know each other in your playing style so now you probably feel like going into the second half you finish spring training more or less um, and you're 
looking forward to, to finish the second year, hopefully in first place ahead of Camden. That's a very, I haven't heard it put that way, but that's pretty darn close. I mean, <laughs> we've played two months. Spring training have almost a month and a half where you're learning about each other. And wow, that's, I've never heard it like that. It makes a lot of sense, though. We had five days. We I mean, maybe a handful of us knew each other, or ran into each other, played against each other, but you've never lived with somebody or know them to that extent, right. you know. But it, uh, we're gelling right now, and it's even you know what, even if we don't win this first half, I'm not going to guarantee it, but we're the best team in our division the second half, hands down. Great. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to the second half. We hope to see you in first place, and everybody will be watching you, all your Southern Maryland fans. So thank you for being with us today, and we hope to have you back on the show in the second half, and you can tell us about how it feels to be in first place. Well, sounds good. Thanks for having me. <laughs> thank you. Stay tuned, fans. We'll be back with another player for you. Welcome back to your Southern Maryland Blue Crab Spotlight. I'm Joe Cross, still here with Amy Calvin, and as promised, we have another Blue Crab player for you tonight. This time we have left fielder Eric Crozier. Eric, welcome to Southern Maryland. Um, tell our fans a little bit about how you made it to the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs. Give us a little bit of your baseball background, if you would. Well, I originally started out as an Indian. I spent four years with the Indians from 2000 to 2004. Uh, from there, I was traded to Toronto. Uh, played 04 in the beginning of 05 in the big leagues there. And from there, it just seemed like a whirlwind started. I kind of went to the Yankees, then the Reds. And then after the Reds uh, was my first appearance in the Atlantic League okay. with the uh, Lancaster Barnstormers. Uh, fortunate to win a championship. Uh, and then after that, had another opportunity to go back to affiliated ball with Boston. Uh, played half a season with them, didn't work out, and went back to Lancaster. And then in the off season, this past off season, I was picked up by the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs in the uh, expansion draft. And that's how I'm here today. So with the expansion draft, did you just get a phone call from your agent saying that he had been contacted by the team or did you go to some type of tryout? I was a phone call from Butch. Okay. And um, he had told me, actually it was on the internet first. And I have a lot of friends and families who are heavy bloggers and, and everything. So there were a million blogs mm -hmm. about I was retiring, I wasn't coming back. and. You're too young to retire. He's only 29, fans. <laughs> and, and then all of a sudden, you know, I saw my name had appeared with the uh, new team. And I had talked to Butch about three or four times. And at that time, I was still waiting to hear back from a couple affiliates for uh, possible spring training invites. Um, but then when that didn't happen, you know, uh, Butch and I met again. And that's when we talked about finalizing things here. Excellent. Well, we're happy to have you in Southern Maryland. I know that everybody that's part of Crustacean Nation is happy to have the Blue Crabs and all the players. They're starting to see you in the community and um, really taking kindly to having the, the welcome addition of a baseball team. People in Maryland love baseball, um, and now we've got it right in our backyard. So it's great to have you here. Um, just so everyone knows the noise that you're hearing, we're actually um, in the middle of batting practice. We stole Eric um, away after he took a couple swings. So that's where we're at. Um, Joe, I know you had some questions <laughs> for Eric. Yeah, uh, do you bat left uh, uh, and hit left, or do you bat right and hit right? And all the way left. All the way left? All the, all uh, the way to the uh, Okay, <laughs> so you have to go for the long ball. The oh. long ball here. You know, and, you know, I get a little frustrated because I see some of the home runs that go out here to left field, and you know it's like, man, you, you really don't have to hit it that good. Mm -hmm. 
and it, it can still look impressive. But, you know, in order to get it out here to the right fields, you have to really get up. And the wind's always blowing in. I mean, like, it's already hard enough. So. Well, we're watching batting practice, and a lot of the guys are hitting long balls, and they're bouncing off the, uh, the picnic area, and then bouncing over top the building behind that. So they definitely have an advantage. But you're doing good. You have uh, your second uh, on the team, for, um, uh, tied with a few other people with eight home runs. So uh, you're doing good. You're doing something right. Right. Somehow you're finding your way out to the right field fence. Well, I've, I've gone over there one time. Um, gone out to center once. I've yet to hit one to left. Imagine that, the shortest part of the park. Uh, but a majority of the home runs have come on the road. Uh, this is a phenomenal stadium. And, you know, let me just say we appreciate the fans who come out on a daily basis uh, just to support us. Mm -hmm. The support that we've gotten has been, been awesome. And I, I'm pretty sure it'll get only better as the season goes on and the summer starts to really settle in. So we just, all of us, we really appreciate you all. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, some of your background, where are you from? And uh... Well, I'm from the Buckeye State. And I hate to admit that because I'm not a Buckeye fan. <laughs> but Columbus, Ohio, born and raised. Um, that's where my family still is. I have a son who's three. He's there as well. So I'm hoping that he's not a Buckeye, but does <laughs> love the sport of baseball. And you're currently on a test, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ladies, come on out to the ball field. Root for Eric, yell, and he might look up your way. <laughs> His birthday's coming up. He's going to be 30. Um, now, we were talking a little bit about home runs, Eric, and you've had eight. You've also struck out a few times, along with everybody else. I think it's, it's inevitable in baseball. You're going to strike out. Um, you're David Ortiz. Everybody strikes out. Um, in the independent league, do you think the strike zone is a little different? Um, you mentioned before we were talking off camera um, before the interview that you feel like you really have a good understanding of the strike zone and you don't swing at pitches outside, but that might be affecting you uh, with your batting average possibly. Uh, it could be, but you know, that's, that's something I'm just going to have to work through. Um, I am very selective. You know, a lot of my managers over the years, they, they often say, Eric, be more aggressive. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a guy who will walk a lot, but who also will strike out a lot. And the majority of those are looking because there's certain times where I won't swing at certain pitches. But Right now, I'm working on being more aggressive, I'm not getting myself into those bad hitters counts, the one twos, the O twos, where you do have to be more defensive. But, um, you know, we'll see how it happens. I just think sometimes with anything, it's just consistency. You know, we'll have a, a time where a certain pitch is called a, a ball, and then you take it later on in the bat, and it's a strike. But, you know, as being a human, you know, that's something that can happen to everybody. So. We're all in this together. We're all trying to work through it and, and learn each other. You know, it's funny, the umpires, they, they're learning to get better just as, as right. we are. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's just something that we all just have to just continue to work together on. Right. You know, good communication. You know, you may want to ask a question like, hey, you know, are you going to go any farther? Are you going to go any higher? Just things like that. And I think that's when you can get an understanding of who's behind the plate. And the walks aren't a bad thing either. You can't score if you're not on base. So I'm sure the manager every day of the week would rather see you um, walk. Than sitting on the bench. That right? Because then you've got the opportunity <laughs> to steal bases and score. Um, one last thing before we wrap up. Joe and I have been talking with everybody this afternoon about this next homestand against Camden that you're five games behind them with five to play. So um, tell us your thoughts on how the team's approaching that. Well, you know, I think if we do that, then we'll run into the same problem that we've run in against Camden the whole year. Uh, we've played them in a million one run ball games, you know, some extra inning games. And I think it's because we just, we treat them as if they're, they're somebody different. You know, we just need to come out and play like we played against Newark like we played these past three days in Bridgeport, because those are all good teams as well. Right. Um, it seems like when we do that, we empower Camden mentally. And people may start to try harder and force things when all we need to do is just keep doing what we've been doing, pitching well, hitting well, playing good defense, and let baseball play itself out. And we're hoping to see you guys win the next five so that we can come out and watch a playoff game on Monday. See you take the championship, and then we'll look forward to first place in the second half too. <laughs> what do you do on your off time, the little off time that you do have? I mean, you play almost every day. If you get a day off, do you just take it easy? Do you go out? Well, I think we have one coming up on Monday, if I'm not mistaken. Unless you're playing. Unless you're playing. <laughs> but um, I plan on, I'm a big video game person. That's what keeps me young, yeah. you know. 30 is right around the corner, I know. <laughs> but 
you know, video games is something that's very relaxing. Uh, and just, it's in the air condition. I'm not a big swimmer, and I feel like we spend enough time outdoors. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm all times I just like to just relax and kind of let the body calm down. If not, I'll, I'll work out or something like that. Well, thank you for being with us. We appreciate it. We know you need to get back to warming up for the game so that we can beat Camden these next few games. Take first place. That's right. There you go. Thank you. Um, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, maybe we'll find Joe somewhere else in the stadium. You can count on that. <laughs> I'm down here at the, what do we call it, the Krabby Cove? Krabby Cove. All right, we're looking at the boats down here. I've got my special friend down here, Adam Smith. He's uh, the one that takes care of all these things. Adam, how many boats do you have? We have 10 bumper boats. 10 bumper boats. Um, and it, I see that you've got some of them plugged in so they run off of batteries. They do. We charge them every night. Every night. How long does the charge usually last? Uh, they charge pretty much in about four hours. About four hours. Now, how deep is the is the Krabby Cove? Three and a half feet. Three and a half feet, and it's three and a half no matter where you go? Three and a half all the way around. All right, great. Now, for those that come out to use this, you have to buy uh, special tickets like you do for some of the things in the playground. How many tickets do you have to get to get into Krabby Cove? It's three tickets per ride. Now, is there uh, an age limitation or a size limitation? If you are height under wise? 48 inches, you have to be with an adult, or under five years old, you have to be with an adult. Now, I see it says weight limit, 425 pounds. Now, can you have multiple people in the boat when they take them out. Yes, we've had a, an adult and two children in there at the same time. Uh, maybe two adults could fit in there if they're a little smaller. Oh, so you can almost get a whole whole family in yeah. there. Great. Now, how long? How fast do these things go? How long does it take to go around the, the course? They go about four miles an hour on top of the water. Um, I've never actually timed the course, but uh, they're pretty quick and they have little squirt guns on them as well and they're motorized and uh, they can move. How far does the uh, does the water squirt when you hit the button? About three feet. Three feet and it's open season, you can squirt whoever you want to squirt? That's correct. If you get in the <laughs> boat, you better be prepared to be wet. <laughs> okay, now when somebody does get in the boat, how, how long uh, a ride do you get? They get five minutes. Five minutes? Now, do you send everybody out as a group, or can you just do individual people? Uh, we send everybody out as a group. If, uh, if somebody comes down in a group where they can't fit all ten out, then we send out however many boats there are. Okay, so you don't just bring one out and put one in and let him go. Right. Oh, that's good. That's, well, that's an easier way to keep, uh, keep uh, a handle on it. But uh, how many gallons of water does this thing hold? 65,000, I believe, is what I've heard. Wow, that's a lot of water. That's a lot of water. And you, you're... Uh, the, the man that takes care of putting all the chemicals and everything else in? Myself and uh, my helper, Brad. Okay, help that's out. Brad over here? That's Brad. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, that's excellent. This is, this is really nice. It's a, uh, a welcome addition to the, uh, to the stadium. Now, during a game, is it pretty much full? 
most of the time? Do you get a lot of people that, that want to get do. in? We do. We have a pretty long line throughout the game. It, it tends to die down around the sixth inning, and we shut them down between the seventh and eighth. Now, I've been listening to some of the games on the Internet, and some of the guys hit home runs over here, and they say it's coming in the area where the Krabby Cove is. Now, have, have any of the home runs hit the water? They have, but we do have safety netting up now that uh, you know prevents that from happening, and we have attendants up there that are on watch for that. Uh, but before the netting was up, we do have several uh, <laughs> splash down out here. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty good. That would be pretty good. Or a free souvenir while you're riding around. Well, that's excellent. Okay, well, I appreciate it, Adam. Thanks for taking time to Thank stay you. out with me. All right, Amy, we'll cut it back to you. Fans, we're back with your Southern Maryland Blue Crabs pitcher, Joe Gannon. He's joining us for an interview. I think Joe Cross went to cool off, so he'll be back soon. In the meantime, we'll talk with this Joe. Um, Joe, you didn't start at the beginning of the season with the Blue Crabs. Tell us a little bit about how you found your way to Southern Maryland. Uh, well, I played for Butch in the past. I actually finished the year last year with him uh, after being with the White Sox. I finished in Nashua. Uh, I've had a relationship with Butch, uh, you know, uh, a real good relationship with Butch. He's always, you know, giving me a chance. Uh, in the off season, I actually uh, had surgery. I tore my Achilles tendon, so I wasn't able to actually start the season right away. And then uh, in contacting Butch, he said, you know, if something happened that, you know, he would try and make room for me. And then in the process, uh, a couple guys actually got picked up out of here. So it was, it was beneficial. It's always good to, to join a team when someone gets picked up and is going somewhere else mm -hmm. other than an injury or, you know, someone not doing well. So. It's also probably good for a pitcher coming in, seeing that other pitchers on the team are being picked up. It means that there's a good chance that they're looking at this team knowing that they have strong pitching. So hopefully we'll be looking to you in the future, too, to um, give you a contract with an affiliate as well. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the guys in here in this league are, are, are obviously looking to get back to affiliated ball, you know, me included. But the important thing is, is I mean, anyone who's out here loves to play. I mean, no one loves a game more than I do. So. You know, if I don't, if, if I get picked up, that's great. If I don't, I'm still playing and and you know loving life. So one way or another, it's just good to have a jersey on. Right, and we're happy to have you. Southern Maryland is happy to have the Blue Crabs and you, um, even though you came halfway through the first half. Um, interestingly enough, Joe was telling us before we started taping that he didn't start out as a pitcher. You started out as a catcher. Um, tell us a little bit about how you make that transition. That's that's a big transition. Usually, you might go from an infielder to a pitcher, or vice versa, but not really a catcher. Well, I made the transition uh, only for one reason, and that was I couldn't hit. So when you're a catcher that can't hit and you don't throw 95, you're pretty much stuck in one way, and that's throwing knuckleballs. So uh, that's what I ended up having to do. And I was lucky enough to work with uh, the Buffalo Bisons for a couple years and, and, and got to pick uh, coaches' brains while Tim Wakefield was there. and. I got in close contact with Phil Necro, who's been a mentor and, and you know unbelievable person towards you know me being able to be, you know even pitch one game, let alone go this far. Great. Um, so being here in Southern Maryland, how many starts have you had? Uh, I think I have seven now, seven, six or okay. seven. And your ERA is pretty good, 3.53. So you're pitching well, um, and it looks like you're going the distance in most of the games. Um, anything that you're working on in particular um, as we move forward into the second half of the season? Uh, you know, the, the key is throw strikes, just like every other pitcher. For me, sometimes it's a little more difficult uh, with the with the way I pitch. But um, you know, I, I know my role. My role is to to try and save the bullpen, throw as many pitches as I can. That way, you know, if if we get an extra innings or, or, or something happens during the week where guys go down, then we have a fresh bullpen. And, and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm staying focused and, and trying to just get as many innings as I, I can in every, every start out there and just keep our team in it because the team we have, if, if the pitchers keep it close, we're, we're in real good shape. Now, as a pitcher, you've got this infamous knuckleball. Is there a certain count that when you throw the knuckleball, in a hitter's count, a pitcher's count? I, you know what? I, I try and throw it. I, I mean, I try and throw it 90% of the time. So, I mean, if it gets to the point where I'm throwing a lot of fastballs, and we might be in a little trouble because uh, I'm not going to blow it by anybody. But I try and mix it up. I'll mix my fastball in there, you know, just to keep guys honest and everything else. And uh, But, you know, if the ball's moving the way I, I hope it does, then I, I should be in good shape. Okay. Now, in the Independent League, since all the games are not televised live, do you still, as players, have the opportunity to look at a lot of the films to um, study the hitters and study um, – where they're hitting on what pitches and in certain counts? Well, I mean, there, there's two ways of looking at that. I mean, the league isn't very big. There's eight teams. So you, you see a lot of the hitters repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing. You, you see their tendencies, but they also see you. Right. 
so you know they can gear on you. But um, you know we have uh, Coach Squeeze. It's he uh, does some filming for us. So you know if there's things that we want to go back to and look at, we do. Uh, as far as the pitchers go, you know we do a lot of work with Andre out in the bullpen, and you know he picks things up and says, you know you might be doing this, you might be doing that, and from there we go after. And, and need be if we we get some some game film, it's usually personal. It's not obviously from the stands. Right. Okay. Um, well, like I said, we're happy to have you here in Southern Maryland, and you guys are getting ready to start um, this five game stretch with Camden, who you're five games behind. If you win five in a row, we'll have a, a playoff game on Monday. Um, I'm sure you'll be making a start through these next five games. Anything that you're focusing on in particular as you play Camden? Since the Blue Crabs unfortunately haven't beaten them yet this season. Well, you know, it's it's awesome. That's why baseball's so awesome. I mean, five games in the first half, we're five back, and we're playing the team. So right. you can't ask for anything more. Right? We, we control our own destiny. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to take what we did in the last couple of games and just try and carry. I mean, this game is a big time momentum game. You know, we feel like we got good good momentum going in. You know, the games we played in Camden since I was here, you know, we could very well have taken three of them, but unfortunately it just turned the other way. And obviously they had a lot of momentum. They ended up rattling off nine or something after that. So, you know, we, we control our own destiny and, and the focus of the players is to just relax, play our play our game and do whatever we have to do to win the game. Okay, and you guys are winning your four and one over the last five, so that's a good thing. Thanks for being here. Uh, it looks like Joe has found his way back to us. Hopefully he pulled off. I am back. No, unfortunately I didn't. I really wanted to get in the water with uh, the lady that we had, Alicia, because that water was nice and nice and clear. And I tell you, I didn't want to come back. <laughs> so what, did I miss anything? We're just talking with Joe about um, this new series coming up against Camden. They're five games back, looking to take first place, hopefully win uh, five in a row. And uh, guarantee looking it. forward to the second half. Oh, yeah. We've got a long way to go. Yes, we do. All right, well, that's going to wrap up this week's show. For Amy Calvin, I'm Joe Cross from Channel 95, and for Joe Gannon, our pitcher with the uh, Blue Crabs, we'll see you next time on the Southern Maryland Blue Crab Spotlight.